I'm not quite sure. <laughs> so we're talking about discerning. Let's see if it'll do what I want to. Discerning the seven spirits of God. And this is in the groups of seven throughout scripture. So those of you who love digging in more, you're going to have fun being like, oh, which of the seven spirits of God aligns with my redemptive gift or aligns with this feast or aligns with this other list of the attributes of Jesus. And so have fun. I did not dig there today, but I'm excited to go there in my own personal study more because I feel like we're just dipping our little baby toe in and it's already like so yummy. So this is the main scripture passage where this whole teaching on the seven spirits of God comes from. Isaiah 11, one to three. And Holy Spirit, just come, come more, just thicker. <laughs> Feel free, God, to train our minds, but also our spirits to just come into alignment with an understanding of who you are. So it says, the cutoff stump of Jesse will sprout, and a fruitful branch will grow from his roots. The spirit of Yahweh will rest upon him. The spirit of extraordinary wisdom the spirit of perfect understanding, the spirit of wise strategy, the spirit of mighty power, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of the fear of Yahweh. He will find his delight in living by the spirit of the fear of the Lord. He will neither judge by appearances or make decisions based on rumors and I feel like because part of what Holy Spirit wants to do today is just release a deeper impartation of himself to us <clears throat> ask Holy Spirit if there's a specific aspect of who he is that he wants to highlight to you today maybe you've been operating and say words of wisdom or words of knowledge or something already and Holy Spirit actually wants to take you deeper in that or maybe he wants to highlight something totally different that you're not operating in at the level he would delight to gift you with because this isn't just about knowledge about God it's about operating in unity with him to bring people freedom to bring freedom to nations to release his power and glory throughout the earth and so there's something about stepping into the delight of who he is and being one with him that enables us to release his glory into the earth. So just say, Holy Spirit, is there something you want to highlight to me today so that I can enrich it in my life, so that I can have it blossom and overflow in my life in a new level? I feel like that's his heart for us. Not just that we'll pick up information, but that we will activated that it will be so activated and alive that we'll operate at a different level so grab on to whatever one he's highlighting for you and let's let's run with this this one was fun now most of you know i've been struggling with breathing uh for a while and when you look at the first one it just means the spirit of yahweh but that's the word ruach, which means breath, right? That means spirit in Hebrew. Ruach, breath of the one who is self-existing. He didn't have to be birthed by anyone. He didn't have to have anyone plant into him, sow into him so he could become something. He was already existent before anyone trained him, developed him, said, I'm going to invest in you. It was already he contained all of it but there's this idea of him being that breath of life and so let's jump into exploring that so the breath spirit ruach of god it's what distinguishes god from idols idols do not have breath the spirit of god has breath it has life 
the breath of God, the Ruach of God has resurrection life inside of it. And it's what gives us breath and life. And so those days when you're like, I can feel like I'm in this zone. Many of you are feelers. So if you're in a zone where you're like this, it feels like death is operating. It feels like there's this heaviness. It feels like the breath is getting sucked out of me. And I had some of that kind of warfare this week with some of the pressure I was under. But when you come into the presence of God, he brings his life and he brings his breath and he wants to bring his resurrection breath life and fill us not only filling up our lungs but filling up our spirits as we're one with him so we're operating out of the life of god and so this was just really fun to step into that place when um i'd felt the squeeze so strong earlier in the week from some warfare and then all of a sudden God's like yeah but this is who I am breathe me in breathe in my life breathe in the life of the very one who is self-existent and then I love this his breath in a battle cry exposes the depths in the inner regions so it's very functional. It's not just about breathing in and breathing out. And there's so many uh, verses about him resurrecting things where he breathed into their nostrils and they became alive. Um, if any part of your life needs resurrection, the spirit of God, the rock breath of God wants to bring his life and breath back into you. So that was, yeah. So let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Psalm 150 verse 6. You think about it, everything that has the ability to breathe, it got that ability, it got that breath of life from the Lord. And so no wonder it says let everything that has breath praise the Lord. For my spirit is still in me and the breath of God is in my nostrils. So every breath you take you are breathing the breath of God. He's given you the life of God. Oops. The Ruach of the Lord is the breath of life carried by the creator, the self-existent one, Yahweh. And being full of him is to be full of life. So I want you to just take a minute and you can just breathe him in. You can sense him in the room. He's here right now. Or you can even just say, God, I want to discern you as the spirit breath of Yahweh. <laughs> I know it's simple. It's like the simplest one, but it's so profound. Just take a moment and breathe him in for a second. You take a minute to breathe in his life into every area where your thoughts have had negativity or death attached to them at any level. And we just release, breathe in the breath of life, Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh. That's holy, that's his holy. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is the spirit of extraordinary wisdom. And my boys could tell you the fancy name for that exact circular multiplication and all the math behind that, etc. etc. But it comes from the extraordinary wisdom of God, which is the Hebrew word chakma. I'm probably not saying it right. So, this part of the seven spirits of God is the spirit that gives the highest level of insight, skill, ability, objectivity, wise advice, strategy, prudence, discernment, skill in war, skill in administration, in religious affairs, ethics, 
and it's the wisdom to be able to rule. So this is basically what Solomon was asking for. He was like, how do I know how to rule? And you think of it, there's things that we probably say over ourselves every day, like I'm not very administrative, or I'm not very techy, or I'm not good at math, or I'm not, and can I just say the Spirit of God is, and He lives in you. And so I invite you to invite this spirit of wisdom that has all the skill and all the ability to strengthen you in the areas where you're like, I don't have this capacity of myself, but he does. He has it all. And he's like, can you please allow me to be your source? I love starting sessions by inviting the seven spirits of God to come or whatever one of the Holy Spirit's highlighting for that session because he brings revelation of what to do and how to do it. And the spirit of wisdom gives understanding. How do I do it? When do I do it? Where do I do it? Why? And in one context for the most powerful impact and blessing and if we're listening, he will be talking to us when we're not when we're not necessarily looking. And he'll sort of like tap us on the shoulder and he'll be like, um, have you thought of this? Can you please do this? Because he's trying to set us up in his strategies. We can't see the end game, but he can see the end game. And I was at a Demon Busters training last night at my friend's house. And um, Emma Stark was doing one of her second to last teachings about coming against principalities and the strategies for dismantling structures in regions. And I was looking back at how Holy Spirit had given me very specific instructions about who to ask, to do what, when. And I was realizing, God, you had a strategy all along and you knew information I didn't know, um, Eliana, you're an example of that. There's things I did not know about you when Holy Spirit told me to ask you to lead, um, to lead the training for SRA to lead the team. The Holy Spirit knew and he was strategically saying, I'm going to position her here because I have this and this and this planned down the road. And so I love it that when we listen to those little one step at a time instructions, God's whole blueprint strategy can unfold. Even when we can't see the big picture, he has a big picture he's leading us into. Proverbs 4, 7 says, wisdom is supreme, so acquire wisdom, and whatever you acquire, acquire understanding. And if you read um, Proverbs 8, if, if I'm remembering it correctly, that is where wisdom is personified as a woman, and it's in contrast with the harlot. But you have wisdom personified as a woman, and you know, She's calling out in the streets. She's calling out and saying, come and listen to me. And I believe the wisdom of God is accessible to us for us to be able to re release to other people. People pay thousands of dollars to access wisdom and insight for how to move forward. But we have the spirit of wisdom living inside of us. If we take time and say, God, what do you want me to do with this? What do you want me to do with this? What do you want me to do this, this? And it doesn't mean he won't lead us through seasons of testing. It doesn't mean he won't lead us through trials, but he will get us through them so that we can prosper, our souls can prosper, and the things of his kingdom can prosper. Um, I've been digging into the book of Proverbs a lot over the last year. It's like my my daily bread. I read other parts of the Bible too, but Proverbs, I'm in it like every day because God's constantly tweaking my thinking about how to run with him. Solomon was considered the wisest man and yet his wisdom came from the spirit that is living within us. Now, 
as you know, Solomon had some flaws later in life. He made some poor decisions, but he had accessible to him the wisdom to rule and make decisions and lead a nation. And we do too. We have wisdom accessible to us. Let's pursue the spirit of wisdom, listening when she speaks, tuning in when she calls out, and then you can meditate on Proverbs 8. And even here's a thought, where has wisdom been calling out for you in this season? Where is wisdom calling out? Maybe it's calling you to get more training. Maybe it's calling you to close your mouth. Maybe it's calling you to correct something or address something. Wisdom is always calling us into alignment with the directions of God. And you can take a moment if you want and you can say, Holy Spirit, I'd like to discern the spirit of wisdom. Maybe if you're a feeler, you're going to feel something. I know just me saying that I can feel this weight, this godly weight <laughs> falling in it falling on the scene. Uh, it's just this presence, this heavy, beautiful presence. And uh, I just hear him saying, all things, all things are mine and, and we're one with him. So all things are yours. Yeah, just drink that in for a minute. And then this one, some of you who know me have heard my story of a vision I had about holding this massive eye of, of God. <laughs> I knew it was the eye of God. His eyes probably much bigger, but he, in the vision, I was holding it. Um, and it just took away all anxiety. It took away all fear because there was such an understanding that he knows everything, that there's nothing has missed his vision. And I believe that's such a great picture of the spirit of understanding, which is the Hebrew word binya, understanding how and why things and people and technology and system and music and arts work. So it's this understanding of how it all runs. My uh, son Caleb operates in this spirit of understanding in a great way. There, he can look at a gadget and understand all the complexity of if he was to take it apart, how it all runs, how he could take all those parts and put them into something else to make them run with a similar function. There's this understanding, and some people have that for music. Some people have that for technology. Some people have that for marketing. Some people have that for art. If I put these colors in this quadrant of the painting it's going to create this effect and this pull on people the spirit of understanding is way beyond just skill it's the ability to understand why things are operating and functioning the way they are and so i love i love operating in this spirit in sessions because God will give you like the first few steps and you don't know how he's going to get to the solution necessarily, but he, you just start operating in the steps he's given you. And then suddenly he gives you key insights. Like the reason they're doing this is because this, this, and this happened. And it might be a word of knowledge, but it might just be highlighting something earlier in their childhood or earlier in their life and putting all the pieces together. This is why this reaction or trigger or whatever is happening so you know how to address it that's the spirit of understanding at work and it can operate in families it can under operate in business um and i think we can ask for more god give us a depth understanding from your spirit of understanding perfect understanding that we can understand what you want us to know and I just want to say this is different than fleshy knowledge, which puffs up. And so we just rebuke puffed up flesh knowledge 
but we say our reliance and our source is God and he can give us understanding even as we come into contact with facts all that but we could submit it to him and he can give us an understanding of all the processes and systems so Holy Spirit would you begin to unpack for us how to walk in the way of understanding Proverbs 9 6 is abandon your foolish ways so that you may live and proceed in the way of understanding understanding gives the ability to invent and create things that work is by your understanding that the hawk soars and spreads its wings towards the south it says in job 29 36 and you think of how many inventions have been made by studying creation And then the spirit of wise strategy. This is the Hebrew word esta, and it means counsel and advice from the master coach, advisor, creator of the universe. And um, first of all, I just want to bind any alternate source of. Um, revelation that's coming from any ungodly spirit so in the name of jesus we just bind every ungodly source every ungodly spirit guide that would try to operate in the place of holy spirit and we say we reject your counsel but we look towards the counsel of god and i believe that this year so many of the prophets are saying like Psalm 24, to be able to come up higher into the council of the Most High. I believe God wants us in His council. He wants us in His chambers. He, he wants us into the intimate places that He brings His friends into. We have access to Him. Think of famous people. There's only a certain amount of people have access to their phone number. There's only a certain amount of people that have access to live conversation with them but God has given us full access into his counsel and he's saying come up he who has clean hands and a pure heart come up receive my counsel and I feel like God wants to raise up a generation of prophets of prophetic people of seers and hearers and discerners and feelers that we operate out of the counsel of the Most High God. We get to ask God for advice. So I just want you to take a moment and drink in the Spirit of God, the Spirit of wise strategy, the Spirit of counsel. And God, we just say, come, teach us how to ascend into the counsel of the Lord. And we just take captive every thought that it would oppose the knowledge of the Most High God. And we say yes to stepping up, to ascending into your presence. We are already seated with Christ in heavenly places. It's not hard for you. So Lord, I thank you for wise counsel, even how to wage war in the spirit realm. How to operate out of peace and rest. how to have heaven flow through us into the world, how to have the peace of God in the midst of any storm, how to release your glory, how to release your kingdom. And we thank you, God, you are the wonderful counselor. Jesus, you are the wonderful counselor. So we thank you. I remember during the season when I was writing my books and I just hear God, but I wasn't visual in the sense of um, 
seeing Jesus coming to me or anything. But I remember um, being at a conference and a prophet came to prophesy over me. And she's like, Jesus has been coming to you every day and he's been speaking to you. And I see him just standing above you and, and teaching you and training you and giving you things to say. And it's a book and, and it needs to be published. And um, it's not something I told her. It's just she could see Jesus was coming to me and speaking with me. And I feel like Jesus as the wonderful counselor and the spirit of counsel wants to come and speak with us daily. This is how you handle this person. And this is how you handle this situation. And this is how I want you to set your mind at ease, even though this isn't resolved yet. And God, we just ask for more. Psalm 73, 24 says, You guide me by your wise advice, and then you will lead me to a position of honor. And I was chatting with Jesus about this the other day, and he's like, you know, my position of honor for a time looked like sleeping in a dirty manger. It didn't look like the king of the region acknowledging me. It didn't look like being pointed out in a crowd as a three-year-old saying, this is the king of kings. <laughs> now, maybe, maybe when the three kings came or however many kings there were, the wise men came, uh, you know, there was honor. God, God did set him up to receive honor, but there's times in your life where honor might not look like what it looks like for somebody else. You might ha be having a stable moment or Gethsemane kind of moment when they're having a crowning of Solomon kind of moment. And so I just want you to like position your heart to hold it loosely. What does that look like for God wanting to honor you? Because there will be seasons where uh, honor looks different but we all know God honored Jesus. And we also know the end of the story. And we're going to have some scriptures there later about how God elevated him. Okay, this one was fun to study. The spirit of mighty power. And that is the word Gabora. Gabora. And um, I believe one of the names of God also is Yahweh Gabora. But um, this is the spirit of power, mighty power. So here's a verse that has that word Gabor in it. You created the mountains by your power and demonstrated your strength, Psalm 65, 6. So this is the bravery and the capacity and the power to complete any task. So whether it's creating a mountain or creating a company, or creating a Sunday school program, or the power to operate in miracles, the power to release such an anointing on people when you touch them for healing, that they fall out in the spirit, the power that people's backs are straightened out when they have had crooked backs their whole life. This is the power the spirit of God's mighty power that he wants us to partner with. And I think this is a fun one. I feel like God's inviting me personally, like grab onto this, grab it. The spirit of God's mighty power lives inside of us and he wants us to partner with him. So here's a verse from Psalm 106.8. Yet he delivered them for the sake of his reputation, that he might reveal his power. Deliverance is an opportunity for God to show off, and it's his desire to show off, to reveal his power. Not in a prideful way, but in a like, here we go, here we go, it's God's moment, he's going to do it. Get excited, he wants to show off through you. Okay, so this was fun. This was, unfortunately, it didn't do the animation of all my funky underlining, etc. But anyway, so this is Ephesians 1.19. My prayer for you 
is that every moment you will experience the measureless power of God. Measureless. Uh, one of the things I heard Emma Stark saying last night was the enemy has limited power. They in a sense have to buy it with all their works and their sacrifices and their junk that they have to do to each other. But God's power is measureless. There is nothing he has to do to build it up bigger. It doesn't run dry. His battery never goes down. It's always accessible to us as we're tapping in and abiding. And his power is desiring, it's desiring to be expressed in the world. The power of God is made available to you through faith then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power. Lately, I've been trying to study marketing because it's probably my area of weakness. <laughs> and I love this because God is into advertising and you are his advertisement. I'm going to say that again because that was just fun. God's into advertising and you are his advertisement. He wants to advertise his immense power as it works through you. This is the explosive, mighty resurrection power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of highest honor and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. If you are dealing with something where you're like, I'm dealing with demonic authorities or I'm feeling under the oppression today or whatever can i just tell you god wants you to step into christ who is seated exalted to the place of highest honor and supreme authority in the heavenly realm he wants you above he wants you to be an advertisement of his immense power that means you can take authority over anything the enemy is throwing at you as you abide in him and just smile because you're advertising for God. You're God's poster child. <laughs> so that just makes me say, yes, Lord, I want to be an advertisement for you. I want my life to be an advertisement for how amazing you are. That just sounds fun. So are you ready to advertise God's power? His power is above every power there is. And that's the word, that word, uh, Gabor, Gabora, but we also have the dunamis power, which we have studied before too. So there's layers of power available to us. Okay. Spirit of God, number five, the spirit of revelation knowledge. Actually, I'm going to pause. Holy Spirit is like, say, go back. Let's just go back here for a minute. Holy Spirit, would you fill us up to be possessed by the spirit of power and might? And we just open ourselves up to you and say, we want to be an advertisement of your power. Would you advertise your greatness through us? Would you advertise your healing power through us? Would you advertise your mighty power to shut down the enemy through us? And we say, here we are. Use us however you want. We give you the picture rights <laughs> to use us as your advertisement of power. You know, when we walk into church every Sunday, there's a sign that says, Walking into this church means that you agree to perhaps be photographed or videoed and uh, let us know if you have an issue with that. Well, I'm just saying, walking in Christ, in the Spirit of God, you've given your picture rights away. <laughs> God might use you in it as an advertisement for His glory. And so, with God, we just say yes. And that's fun. I just want you to take a minute and see if there's anything physical you're feeling i know my hands are just tingling right now thank you god okay this is exciting here we go there's more of god spirit of revelation knowledge so this is the word da'ath in hebrew 
this is the discerning or it says the discerning person acquires knowledge the wise person seeks knowledge proverbs 18 15 so you can have this from being discerning you can have this being wise but it's going to end up you actually have knowledge you have knowledge of the holy one and i was reading in isaiah this morning and it said the the knowledge of the glory of the lord is going to cover the earth the knowledge of the glory of the lord is going to cover the earth think of those people in your life who don't have a knowledge of the glory of the lord yet well there is a knowledge of god that is going to spread it's going to spread and release his glory that is the knowledge i'm hungry for there's lots of layers to this word knowledge but that's the one that knowledge of the lord knowledge of the most high when god's like i know you i knew you before the foundation of the world and i chose you that's the knowledge of God. So knowing God, this is also about knowing information. It's about knowing and discerning what's operating in a given situation. So that's like discernment. You can know, wait a minute, there's an angel of finance in the corner over there. Wait a minute, there's a Leviathan spirit operating over there. Oh, that pastor is operating in an anointing for not only evangelism, but prophetic evangelism with power. So there's this knowing that you have. And this also goes with the, the word of knowledge. So you can know someone's phone number because God tells you their phone number. You can know that someone has a son or a daughter or three daughters and they're living with a brother. Or you can know that there's brother committed suicide the day before why because it's the spirit of the knowledge of god is operating and you can step into the gift of words of knowledge because of that uh, job 38 verse 2 god was dealing with job's friends who had been trying to give him advice and they had been giving him bad advice <laughs> and he God said who is this who darkens counsel with words without knowledge we want to be knowledgeable in the knowledge of God so we're not just randomly throwing out all this counsel and all this information but it's actually not in alignment with the spirit of the knowledge of God okay so this is the revelation knowledge of God too and I like this in Hosea 4 Four six. One of the verses says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you've forgotten the law of God, I will also forget your children. And can I say the opposite is true too? If your family is grabbing on to the knowledge of God, how to close doors to the enemy, how to pursue God in the reality of who he is, how to shed off false identities, etc., then you're not going to be destroyed, you're going to prosper. So this key area of knowledge can either lead to destruction or it can lead to prospering. And I believe God wants us to prosper body, soul, and spirit. So knowledge is a big deal. And here's another verse about knowing in the New Testament. So obviously it's not the Hebrew word because New Testament is Greek, but you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So knowledge is really important. This isn't the same as the knowledge that just puffs up. This is the knowledge of the revelation of God that tr brings transformation. In the life coaching world, everybody's looking for where's the transformation? What can you advertise that you saw this thing transformed? Well, can I just say when the knowledge of God is operating, transformation is such a natural byproduct. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord, Yira, flawless loyalty to God above all else. And 
if you've had people in your life that operate in this, it is such a gift where they're like, we are not making that compromise because there's no way we're going there. There's no way we're making that compromise. Our loyalty to God comes above our loyalty to you. It comes above our loyalty to that company. It comes above our loyalty to that situation or that church. The spirit of the fear of the Lord is operating and it will protect you. It will protect you. I know some of the times when God's like, you need to have the spirit of the fear of the Lord, not the fear of man. It has gotten me out of some nasty situations. Sometimes there was initial cost to pay, but there was this escape where I was able to escape out of traps the enemy had set because you could operate in this, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So it's the ability to have an awareness of how this would impact your precious relationship with God deciding to put him as the most important above all else. So think about honor, whether it's a a conversation about what's going to happen at the Halloween party, or whether it's a conversation about whether the elders board should leave the denomination because of some things happening in the denomination, or whether it's just a decision of what may be to watch on family night. The spirit of the fear of the Lord is so key. It's going to help you have integrity in your finances. It's going to help you to have integrity in your relationships. So that like Daniel, when suddenly things got tight because there was pressure, when people began to scrutinize his life, they couldn't find anything to peg him on because he operated in this spirit, the spirit of the fear of the Lord will protect you. And because he was operating blamelessly, the Lord protected him in the lion's den. And it gives you moral knowledge. Fearing the Lord is the beginning of moral knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1 28 then they'll call to me but I will not answer they'll diligently seek me but they will not find me because they hated moral knowledge and they did not choose the fear of the Lord moral integrity determined by a choice to honor God no matter the personal cost it prolongs your life it gives you strong confidence and refuge and it's a life giving fountain it's worth more than great wealth i remember a time when heidi baker had gone to the revival in toronto that some people call the toronto blessing and after going there a church said we will make a one million dollar donation to your ministry but you must promise us you're not ever going to go back to that revival And she knew that God was her source and he was saying, no, I want you here. She had to obey the voice of God to get what God was empowering her with to carry out the glory of God in the nation that God was calling her to release it into. She turned down the million dollars. And if you listen to her story, a number of things happened that looked negative at the beginning. They were kicked out of their compound Uh, rebels came and took it over lots of different hard things happened during the next season but then God's glory moved in with miracles and multiplication happened and thousands of people came to the Lord many orphans were reached etc but it took taking a costly choice to say I'm going to fear the Lord not man the fear of the Lord is greater it's worth more than great wealth And I love this. This is that same passage in Isaiah that we get this whole list from. And it's talking about Christ. He will find his delight in living by the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Sometimes when people talk about the fear of the Lord, they talk about it like it's a drudgery, like it's terrifying, like like God is so terrifying that it would be like horrific. 
And there is a horror that falls on the enemies of God because they're not in covenant with him. But may I just say for those who are walking in covenant with the Lord, who are in Christ, they have access to the delight that God intends for us to have when we walk by the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. There's a delight. And if you haven't encountered the delight that God has when you're walking in the Spirit of the fear of the Lord, I just invite you, ask God, God, can I step into the delight that Jesus has when he's walking in the fear of the Lord? Can I just step into that place of delight? I, I just, yeah, that's an encounter in itself, the delight of Christ. So, once again, it's not do my animation the way I thought it would, but that's okay. So the seven spirits of God. So you have the spirit of the Lord. This is just a recap. That's the breath of Yahweh. You have the spirit of extraordinary wisdom, the spirit of perfect understanding, the spirit of wise strategy, the spirit of mighty power, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the fear of Yahweh. And Ephesians 1 8 says, This superabundant grace is already powerfully working in us. It's already powerfully working in you and flooding into every part of our being, releasing within us all forms, all forms of wisdom and practical understanding. Now, the Holy Spirit has stamped and sealed every one of us, guaranteeing the rights of our covenant. He is given to us like an engagement ring, is given to a bride as the first installment of what's coming. So you operating right now, right now, in the here and now, on this earth, in all seven of the aspects of the spirit of God, the spirit of his power, the spirit of wisdom, all the different aspects. That's like your engagement ring. It's like, I belong to King Jesus. He's mine and I'm gonna show off my diamond. I pray continually that the father of glory, by the way, I love that name for God. I just. Yeah, the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ would unveil in you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation through the fullness of being one with Christ. It doesn't say one day you're going to be one with Christ. You already have the fullness of being one with Christ. And sorry, Apparently, I didn't put the reference. That's in Ephesians 1. It's from the Passion Translation, and I'm not sure which verse it is, but it's in Ephesians 1. 